Kia ora. welcome to episode 52 of the SWZ podcast, the podcast for New Zealand Star Wars fans. My name is Matt. And my name is Christy. Another really interesting week for news from a galaxy far, far away, so let's jump in and talk Star Wars. First up, the last couple of days have shown us a couple of new teasers for The Book of Boba Fett featuring Timura Morrison, due out on December the 29th, very soon, with tomorrow being the start of December in fact, so less than a month all up. Now these teasers are just 30 seconds long each, pretty quick moving and regurgitating a lot of footage that we've already seen in the trailers, but there are a couple of new frames, a couple of new scenes in each and slight extensions of each frame, and I really feel like the hype is building for a number of different reasons. The first one is called Rain, the one out this morning is called Message. Just as a side note, also on StarWars.com, in association with these teasers, a couple of character posters of Boba Fett and Fennec Shand have been shown. These are very cool pieces of artwork with you know bright orange, fiery backgrounds that would actually make very nice posters. They're very good looking pieces of art. But just talking about these two trailers in, in general, uh, like I say, the hype really feels like it's building. And I think it's probably building internationally, but we really feel it locally here in New Zealand with Tim being the the lead of the face of Boba Fett, the face of the series in its entirety. And there's so much about that aspect of it that's just so exciting. He sort of narrates these two trailers, and that has a lot of impact. I think you said something about uh, his voice and, and that he can just about speak any words and it comes across in a really sort of dominating, sinister almost tone. Yeah, I, I particularly noted it in the first one, the way that he says, I am Boba Fett. And I've noticed this in the YouTube comments of for these uh, trailers as well. It sounds like they're sort of recreating a little bit of that moment from the animated segment in the holiday special, which was, you know, sort of the first time we heard Boba Fett speak and stuff like that. And people are talking about, you know, look, drawing in things like the Amban rifle and the Mandalorian. They obviously sort of recognize the significance of the holiday special in his sort of backstory so it'll be interesting to see if they drop any other sort of little moments in there calling back to that origin uh, cartoon yeah. and his narration expands in the second teaser where he says you know i was left for dead on the sands of tatooine which just sounds awesome the way the way he utters utters those phrases you know we, we, a few podcasts back i think i said that you know he can He's the perfect face for Boba Fett. I think he's going to really bring an interesting characterization to the character in terms of physicality, but also just, you know, his voice and his, his mannerisms. It's, I, I, I couldn't, like, this is going to be the biggest thing in Star Wars since, uh, it sounds like an exaggeration since A New Hope, but I think for Kiwis, it's a, it's a really, really big deal, and that's exciting on that basis. Yeah, it's fun to see uh, Disney and Star Wars really sort of ramping up the hype for this. Finally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I mean, goodness knows how much they're going to sort of drip feed out. These trailers are coming out well, two days pretty, of, pretty two days fast, back so to back this week. don't yeah. know what sort of pace they're going to keep up. Are they going to drop a new one every day leading up, or are they just going to sort of do like a week of it? And then, yeah, obviously you're keen to see sort of more merchandising tying in for this and stuff like that certainly in the tops star wars card trader app they have already released a couple of book of boba fett sets today they just launched another set featuring boba fett and fennec shand and the slave one vehicle which is really quite cool we obviously see that in one of these new trailers which yeah, is well very that, exciting that's one of the pivotal there's, oh, okay so both these teasers are using what seem to be the same scenes that we've seen so far. They just expand on them and use a few addition, additional frames. Everything seems to be set on Tatooine at this point. But the key point from that first teaser is that reveal of, of the Slave One and Boba Fett Starfighter in, in the hangar. And in that, he appears to be wearing not his armor, his original nomadic outfit. So we presume that is a, a flashback. Yeah, well, if we think back to the sort of the last canon appearance, which would have been in Return of the Jedi where he ultimately falls into the Sarlacc. So we would assume that he would have parked his starship <laughs> yeah. at Jabba's palace or a nearby, you know, docking sort of bay, docking yeah. bay. So I guess when he's, you know, getting back out, he's going to go find where he left it. Well, that's where, that's where all the stuff is. I yeah. guess if you survive, you got to then yeah, get some supplies, get some... He may even have medical supplies, I mean, because then the next big step we see is, um, in the second teaser, is, is the what, what's presumably a back door, or at least a medical um, facility or medical procedure taking place, which, again, is, is going to be a little bit of a backstory too, I think, and 
I know one of the big questions that people want from this is how are they going to bridge that gap from where we last saw him in Return of the Jedi to him suddenly appearing in The Mandalorian. You know, we want to we wanted to see if the Book of Boba Fett would cover that. Would they explain how he got out of the Salak? Because it, it had been written in some of the old Legends books and things like that. But we want to see how they sort of explain it and bridge that gap. How does he get out? How does he sort of, you know, come to be where we see him in The Mandalorian? So these little snippets that they are giving us in these trailers look like we're either going to get an episode or two or even just flashbacks to yeah. fill in the gaps, which will be enough if they just let, it, if they let the I, audience know what happens in I, between those. I don't know how deep they'll go in terms of terms of that explanation, but I almost I almost don't care. Just superficial is probably fine just in terms of laying out the general story arc uh, that got him from A to B. Uh, a little bit of detail is fun, and we're going to get a little bit of that because we're clearly seeing some flashback scenes. But yeah, I don't feel it has to be too too deep of an explanation. Uh, just superficial will be fine with me. So there's some other key aspects to these teasers that we found quite interesting. I liked the sort of aerial views of Mos Eisley or whatever Tatooine settlement we are actually seeing in them. It reminded me very strongly of some of the video games we play where we do a lot of jumping around on roofs. Battlefront, the earlier versions of Battlefront and even Star Wars The Old Republic all have quite, you know, have Tatooine settlements where you can, you know, ascend the buildings and, and jump around between buildings and the that felt like that there was a lot of overlap between games that we've experienced in that regard and the representation of, of Tatooine in these trailers and by extension the series when it comes out. I know that when it comes to these sort of big canon movies and TV series, they don't always need to stay true to some of the wider universe elements there. But it is fun when it looks like they are keeping true to uh, visual representations that are already established in the wider universe of Star Wars materials. Yeah. Well, obviously the games that I'm just talking about were based on the original trilogy versions, but I think there's even things that have shown up in the games, like the, the sort of canopies that you can run across and so forth, that uh, I think everything is starting to overlap in a very, very cool way. And I noted that the hangar that the Slave One is in, someone pointed out that that's actually, the, the, the physical model for that, or the digital model for that rather, is, is seems to actually be taken from, from Battlefront, which makes sense in terms of just porting digital assets between games and the engine that the volume actually runs on. Uh, yeah, there's no point sort of designing a whole environment if somebody's already done it for you. They might make some tweaks to make it sort of a little bit more high res for, for cinema purposes, but yeah it makes sense to keep with something that's already designed and established. So we may see a few more of these teasers over the next few days. Who knows what's... I mean, there's, there's still 29 days before this comes out. It'll be on, a, on a Wednesday, New Zealand time. And yeah, still a few more days. So I don't think they can keep it up at quite the rate of one per day. So we'll see how that pans out. But we may see a few more over the next few days and we may see something bigger down the line or some other form of teaser material. But clearly some interesting things are going to build up to episode one with these adversaries that both Fennec and Boba Fett are facing, the, the guys in the sort of purple jumpsuits with the silver armor, are interesting and unknown at this point in time. One of them is clearly captured by, by Fennec Shan at some point and brought into the palace. So there's definitely a key story element there. And as I say, there's also those flashbacks that they'll probably delve into quite early in the series. It's only a frame or two, well, not a lot of variation in the frames of Boba Fett getting that medical procedure done. So it's not clear if that's sort of an ongoing thing that he's had to have since coming out of the Salak. But that's clearly a very interesting story element that um, I'm actually quite looking forward to them exploring just a little bit. The other thing that I really, really like talking about Moss Eisley and just that feel, that original trilogy feel of, of Tatooine was the, the panning shots of the, the establishing shots of Jabba's Palace that we saw in the teasers. It's such an iconic... You know, that word's probably going to get quite overused and when we're talking about this sort of thing, but it is such an iconic silhouette and establishing shot from Return of the Jedi, and it was fun to see that, to see that again, to see that really, really solid. Because, you know, Mandalorian had a... The Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2 had a few callbacks to the original trilogy, but nothing, you know, that, you know when they visited Tatooine in particular, the Sand Dunes and the Banthas and, and Mos Eisley Spaceport, but Jabba's Palace uh, really, really ties so solidly into Return of the Jedi. I... Really like seeing that scene in particular. I'm quite interested to see how much they might reference what happened in The Mandalorian. Obviously, we see some elements of Boba Fett before he meets The Mandalorian, and for the majority of the footage that we have seen, he is wearing his newly acquired armor. And obviously, 
he got that from the Mandalorian. So it'll be interesting to see whether they reference it, whether there's like even a bit of a cameo with the Mandalorian, whether they're sort of talking or or referencing something yeah, well, that happened in the other series. Because Fennec's story overlaps a lot with that as well. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how much they touch on that or whether they just simply do a small reference and kind of keep moving on because you can go watch the other series to to, to get more details on that. So Yeah, so on, on that specific point... Uh, the Empire magazine, which we talked about in the lot last podcast, which is focusing on the book of Boba Fett, we're yet to see it on the shelves in New Zealand, but hopefully that'll be out very, very soon. We talked about all the content in the Empire magazine, but a little bit more has come out since the last podcast, and it relates to the Rangers of the New Republic series, and we've got confirmation at this point, pretty solid confirmation, that that series will not go ahead in its previously conceptualized format, because Kathleen Kennedy said on the topic of Rangers of the New Republic, we've never written any scripts or anything on that. Some of that will figure into future episodes, I'm sure, of the next iteration of The Mandalorian. Now that makes sense, I guess. It never really kind of got off the ground for a number of reasons, which we're all familiar with. But they will take the conceptual material from it and sort of spread it out across The Mandalorian and possibly some of the other overlapping series. Because we know there's going to be a little bit of overlap because of the timelines and the characters involved between Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and so forth moving forward. So yeah, I think that's going to be one of the really interesting things about the book of Boba Fett as to what extent we will see that overlap whether it's going to be sort of overt or, or subtle because you know there is this there is this notion that they are all tied together to a bigger story arc our, you know bigger happenings in the Star Wars galaxy at that point in time and it'll be interesting to see to what extent and at what rate those things are all drawn together. And of course, you know, speaking of the possibility of whether the Mandalorian might show up in a cameo role, of course, everyone's trying to guess what other denizens or bounty hunters from other uh, material might appear in this one. Obviously, with Boba Fett, we... It might be fun to see other characters like IG-88 or Bosk, ones that have sort of shown up here and there, but we don't really know what the ultimate fate is in sort of this new canon era. There's so many sort of fun other characters, particularly on a place like Tatooine, where we know has such a storied history. How many other people, like we know in some of the older books, they made reference to some of the people sort of escaping, not getting killed when Jabba's sail barge exploded. So we don't really know how many of those characters might still be out there, who was sort of waiting and chilling back at Jabba's palace. Obviously, Bib Fortuna survived. We don't know who else might be there. Well, and obviously the Gamorrean guards and things like that. So and by my be, Max, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun to see how much they sort of pull in from other characters characters that we that we already know yeah I'd personally love to see Dengar we know that he doesn't have a canon death at this point in the story but so he'd be one I'd, I'd like to see again the other thing just on that note I mean we know that Taika Waititi voiced IG-11 that Reese Darby has voiced IG-88 in a VR game if they bring in an IG series droid if they bring in one of those two characters or another Kiwi into the mix it'll be super fun all right just changing tack I know we'll have a lot more to talk about the book of Boba Fett but moving forward Something that's come out in the in the last few days focuses on the Galactic Star Cruiser, which we talked about last week as well. We talked about the reveals of the lightsaber training exercise on the Galactic Star Cruiser, which, as we've said many times, is the live-action experience at the Disney Resort in Florida. It's opening early next year. Now, there's a new trailer that's come out for this from, uh, on the official Disney Parks channel, which shows a little bit more material from it. It shows the entranceway to the actual hotel which is sort of like the spaceport that you use to ascend to the star cruiser hotel in terms of story and lore they showed some of the hallways and the bars and so forth but the key key thing here is that they showed in one of the bars in the hotel the twilight character gaia who is a, a singer and it was quite fun and interesting to see one of these live action alien species actually performing in that way they showed a few more bridge shots, and we talked about the bridge of the Galactic Star Cruiser in this sort of defense arcade style game. When they showed it last week, uh, it looked a little bit dull, for want of a better word, because of the way they lit the bridge. It looked very stark and clinical. We saw some slightly more interesting ambient lighting this time around, which made it look a little bit more atmospheric and a little bit more interesting. It still had the same consoles and so forth, which I've got some nitpicks personally about, but at least we got this feel that the, the, the lighting can make a lot of difference to the atmosphere on board the Galactic Star Cruiser and make it feel a little bit more in-world. 
The only thing that bugged me about this specific teaser was the almost unbelievable overacting of the person that was involved in terms of sort of showing it off and demonstrating it. They had a Disney Parks staff and an actor sort of interacting to convey this experience, but it was just a little bit overplayed, which I find a bit annoying, not just from a viewer's perspective. I think it's a weird move because it feels fake. And I think that's actually doing a disservice to the, to the selling of the, of the product in many ways. Yeah, if you have to act overhyped, then it makes you doubt the the actual level of sort of interest that you would have seeing the stuff in person. Obviously, they know that with this price point, this is not the sort of thing that kids are going to be able to nag mom and dad to go to. It's not like a county fair or something. This is a very high price point experience. The advertising is going to be targeted at the grown-ups, the adults that can afford this, the ones that are going to actually do the budgeting to, to be able to go and experience this. So it kind of feels a little bit overdone for an adult audience it's the kind of thing you'd expect on say like the disney channel or something like that you know trying to get like the sort of teens and and children sort of amped for it so i would prefer to see it just sort of like just just show us what it's like without the sort of the the over exaggerations i'm sure it will be really fun and i'm sure people will come out sort of with with a sort of a really glowing review of it, but to sort of ham it up when we're only getting these very small snippets. They're still using a lot of concept art. Hopefully we're only getting small snippets because so far we've seen the bridge, we've seen the lightsaber training, we've seen the hallways, we've seen the concept art for the rooms, and we've seen the entrance to the spaceport. In terms of what we know about the experience, I I can't think of many more other things that we're actually expecting to see. Some larger dining rooms with with the captain's table and so forth. But there's a risk that, um, you know, what, what we've seen might actually be getting close to what, what there is available to see. Yeah, and the it, concept art that they keep including includes, like, the lobby, uh, a restaurant, and the bridge, but with full of people. Yeah, but not, not, not a lot more than Imagine what, scenarios. Yeah. Okay, so as, as we've said before in previous podcasts, the, the proof is in whether or not this, this sells, and we know that it is selling well, and secondarily what the reactions will be when the first people get on board i'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that find it super hyped and then there's going to be a bunch of people who look at it a little bit more critically or objectively um, based on how much money it, you have to spend to you know participate in this experience so we'll we'll have a really really interesting and solid idea when uh, that start, information starts coming out later next year okay just checking in it's time for has lab a rank or watch now, we've talked about this uh, in previous podcasts, of course. As of today, at the time of recording, the number of backers is at 4,755 out of 9,000 with seven days to go. This time next week, it will be down to just hours. It will still actually be live at this time next week. And we'll have with near certain information about whether or not this will go ahead. Over the past week, you know, last week we talked about how the rate at which it was dropping. Over the past week, things have stabilized a lot. There have been um, upticks as well as um, drops. Overall, there has been a slight increase on a day-to-day basis, but it's really been in, in single single figures or the tens, certainly not hundreds per day. So as, as, previous, as with previous discussions, I'm not holding my breath for this to pan out. And even if it does, it's not going to make any of the top tiers for additional pack and bonus material which is a shame because in some ways breaking the first target but not getting a secondary material is, a, is almost a, a worse outcome than not going ahead at all but I'm not holding my breath for this to go out it's still plausible but it's not looking like that's going to be the case so one more check in on the Haslab Rancor next week to find out whether or not it goes ahead and have a, a brief a brief touch base on what we think the implications will be moving forward one way or another for this because it will will definitely impact on future HasLab Star Wars projects. Over on the SWNZ YouTube channel, we've published a couple of videos looking at specific New Zealand collectibles over the past few decades, or going all the way back to 77, in fact, and I just wanted to mention those here. We've taken a look most recently in the past week at the Quality Baker's Bread Star Wars cards from 1997, which is a series of 10 original trilogy character cards that came out prior to the release of the prequels, packed in bread products, loaves of bread, and really enjoy putting these together and really appreciate the comments that we've been getting on the YouTube channel that other people have enjoyed sort of seeing those because one thing I find when I'm putting these together and writing about them on Stephen Jet is that there's always a little bit more of a story to these collectibles and how they came about and how they were released than just taking a look at the cards or stickers or, or whatever that were available in New Zealand over the years. We also took a look recently at the Bluebird New Zealand Star Wars Episode 1 cards from 1999 
And we're going to be doing this on an ongoing basis. I've got some fun ones coming up. So hopefully you'll join us over on the SDMZ YouTube channel to take a look on an ongoing basis at unique New Zealand Star Wars collectibles. One more thing just to mention that's come out in the last week is another coin from New Zealand Mint. Continuing in their Mandalorian Classic coin line, there is a new Grogu coin, or in fact three coins. A silver coin, a quarter ounce gold coin, and a one ounce gold coin featuring Baby Yoda, the child Grogu. This is the second in the Mandalorian Classic coin lineup following on from Din Djarin a couple of months back now, I think. So they're going to continue with this classic coin line. There's not a lot of other, other sort of classic coin lines. We've been seeing the Chibi coins in particular and the more recent faces of the Empire coins. So it's interesting to see them go back to the classic coins, which are just round, non-coloured, silver and gold Star Wars characters. But on that note, that's about it for today's instalment. A bit of a short one, but uh, lots of really fun material to be looking forward to over the next little while. I guess we're done doing talking, though. If you have any thoughts on the topics we discussed today, let us know how excited you are about the Book of Boba Fett. We're definitely keen to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment on the YouTube page or our website page for this podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you taking your time to listen to us share our passion for Star Wars. Stay tuned to our website, swnz.co.nz, for Star Wars news for New Zealanders and another podcast episode next week and every Tuesday. Don't forget you can jump on over to either our Facebook group or the SWZ message boards to discuss all the latest Star Wars news with other Kiwi fans. Kia ora, kia noho haumaru, thank you for listening and stay safe. Turo Hawaiki, may the force be with you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, go ahead and like the video, check out the SWNZ podcast playlist for our other episodes, and subscribe for alerts about new episodes. See you next time.